ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணா அட் யமுனா ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணா அண்ட் பலராமா அலாங் வித் த கவுஹர்ட் பாய்ஸ் வேர் என்ஜாயிங் த ரஸ்டிக் லைஃப் அமாங் த மெடோஸ் வுட்ஸ் ஹில்ஸ் அண்ட் டேல்ஸ் அமாங் த ட்ரீஸ் அண்ட் புஷஸ் தே வேர் யூஸ் டு ப்ளே சம் ஸ்போர்ட்டிங் கேம்ஸ் தே வுட் டிவைட் தெம் செல்ஸ் இன்டு டூ பார்ட்டிஸ் அண்ட் ஃப்ரேம் தேர் ஓன் ரூல்ஸ் அண்ட் ரெகுலேஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் பெனால்டிஸ் அண்ட் கோல்ஸ் அண்ட் டிசைட் தேர் ஓன் சக்ஸஸ் அண்ட் ஃபெயிலியர்ஸ் ஒன் டே ஆஸ் தே வேர் பிளேயிங் ஒன் டீமன் பிரலம்பா ஃப்ரெண்ட் ஆஃப் கம்சா கேம் அண்ட் ஜாயின் தெம் இன் த கைஸ் ஆஃப் அ கவுஹர்ட் பாய் வித் த இன்டென்ஷன் ஆஃப் ஹார்மிங் ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணா அண்ட் பலராமா ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணா சென்டட் திஸ் அண்ட் அலர்ட்டட் பலராமா they paired themselves into two groups the opposing leaders being shri krishna and balarama the penalty was that the loser must carry the winner on his shoulders the game went on balarama got up on the shoulders of pralamba slowly pralamba carried balarama hither and thither and covered a good distance off by that time he felt the weight of balarama unbearable for him he resumed his real form of a demon and tried to run away balarama gave him a severe blow with his fist on his head and the demon fell down dead rolling on the ground all the boys began to praise balarama for his valor as they were continuing their childish plays in the afternoon a wild fire surrounded them the boys began to pray to shri krishna to save them shri krishna asked them to close their eyes and when they did so he extinguished the fire in one breath by swallowing it as if it was drinking water as shri krishna grew up and became more playful and chivalrous the girls and lasses of brindavan developed a great attachment for him his absence from raja during day time was an agony for them one would express if i had the good fortune to have been born as a bamboo i would have become a flute and shri krishna would have loved me most i would have touched his lips reproduced his songs and he would have kept me tight in his waist in the evenings they would be delighted to hear the approach of the sound of his flute and repair to the courtyards when they see him on the pathway they would catch hold of him take him up in arms kiss him fondle him and leave him with great difficulty to reach his home the supreme mandane affection between them and the lord increased day by day and became very strong the minds of all of them got centered round him it was the winter season all the lasses used to get up early in the mornings go to the yamuna take bath in the refreshing waters and come out on the bank they would make a figure of the goddess katyayini out of sand create a form for the formless and worship her with flowers and fruits and pray o devi make shri krishna our husband their prayer was a physical impossibility there were there were many he was one they were grown up he was a young boy less than 7 years old but spiritually it is a necessity every soul aspires to merge with the supreme for this the early dawn before the day breaks and before the worries of the world begin to torture one is the most auspicious time for communion with the supreme the antara antaryamin through meditation great seekers and devoted poets have left records of their ecstatic devotion by describing themselves as brides and the supreme as the bridegroom and have tried to merge in him in nuptial union the highest pleasure that an ordinary man could imagine this is an expression of supreme devotion which is otherwise called para bhakti the lasses continued their worship for a month the last day was a full moon all of them got up very early and proceeded to the river hand in hand singing his glories in chorus having reached the river they found no human head anywhere nearby 
they took off their clothes kept them on the bank and went into the water for bath all naked shri krishna had heard of their worship and their austerities their bath and their worship in the mornings perhaps to reward them he started with his friends behind them and hid himself behind the bushes when all the girls had entered the water he moved behind the herbs and bushes and removed all their clothes one by one went back got up on a tree and sat there he instructed his friends to be quiet and not to make any noise the girls finished their bath and looked out for the clothes the clothes were not there the they searched all over and then looked at the tree and saw shri krishna him for whom they had been earning so ardently they requested him to return their clothes he said you can come singly or collectively and select your individual clothes you have been performing worship observing austerities how dare you take bath naked and offend the goddess whom you are worshiping and the sacred river as a punishment you come and select your own clothes the girls saw reason in his words they hesitated for some time looked at each other's faces and finally decided to take the clothes they went out of the water covering their thighs with one hand and tried to take the clothes with the other shri krishna objected if you want your worship to be successful stretch your both hands up and salute the goddess saying by mouth om namah devi the i does not exist in me and receive the clothes they did according to his instructions and received clothes dressing themselves up they remained there for some time to enjoy his company he promised them that they would reap their fruit of the austerities in the autumn season and for the present he bade them go home unless the body am i feeling dies self consciousness does not arise so he taught them to leave the body consciousness and merge in thought word and deed with the supreme one day shri krishna and his friends were in the grazing fields it was midday he was sitting under a big shady tree watching the cattle there was unusual calmness around Shri Krishna felt a reverie and addressed the boys friends look at this gigantic tree how noble and gracious it is like saints and noble men such trees also live only for the sake of others paropakarartham they suffer the rain storm sunshine snow and winds yet they protect those who seek refuge under them from the very troubles really their birth is enviable just like approaching a saint or a noble man if anybody approaches them they never disappoint the trees give their shade or leaves flowers fruit bark fuel timber or fragrance gum ashes or coal and gratify the desires of the seekers such qualities of goodness and compassion are inborn in great souls determined to live for the benefit of others striving to serve them with their life wealth intellect and speech when shri krishna pronounced such inspired words there was a long silence it was a spiritual feast and a divine experience then they all went to the river and drank water the cowherd boys came back running and beseeched shri krishna saying krishna you are a great hero we know you have destroyed many demons but you have not looked at the demon called hunger which is troubling us now shri krishna said to them do not be afraid i will attend to that also all of you proceed to the yonder grave there you will find some brahmins performing a great sacrifice they are aspiring for heavenly gifts you can inform them of our presence here and ask them for some food for our sake the boys went there and saw a big yagnashala 
a great sacrifice was proceeding with a law, great lot of arrangements and supplies. Many Brahmins were reciting mantras and offering rice and ghee to the fire god. The boys went to an approachable distance near the Brahmins and narrated Sri Krishna's errand and asked for some food to relieve their hunger. The Brahmins heard them, but they said neither yes nor no. The boys waited for some time and returned back to Sri Krishna with downcast eyes. They reported their disappointment to Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna patted them on the back, told them not to be disheartened. He directed them to go again and seek the Brahmin ladies near the kitchen for their errand to be successful. The boys gladly went again, avoided the priests, marched straight to the kitchen and called out the mothers and said, Sri Krishna and Balarama are waiting under yonder tree on the banks of Yamuna. They are very hungry. They request you for food to relieve their hunger and the hunger of their followers. Please, we beg of you for this charity. The Brahmin ladies knew no bounds for their joy when they heard these words. How fortunate are we? The Lord is calling us to kiss to his gracious presence. All our austerities have fructified. He will accept our offerings. We shall have his darshan. We have come to the end of our births. So saying, they filled some baskets with food of many varieties, sweets, condiments and curds. Carrying the baskets on their heads, they set out singing his praise. Meanwhile, the men folk came to know of their audacity and tried to prevent them from going, but to no purpose. The ladies had no ears to hear their words. Their minds were already deposited in Sri Krishna. The boys led the way and the ladies followed. They reached the presence of Sri Krishna. They placed the baskets near his feet, prostrated to him and expressed that their life's purpose has be, had been fulfilled. Sri Krishna received the food so kindly served by the mothers. When all the boys were fully served, Sri Krishna said that the kind ladies could return, their purpose having been completed. But the ladies protested, O oh Krishna, where are we to go, leaving you? Having reached you, there can be no going back. Na punaravartante, na punaravartate. We have no other place to go. We have relinquished our husbands, children, friends, relatives, houses and belongings. We possess nothing but you. You have no other purpose to accomplish. We have no other purpose to accomplish now. We will remain here as your servants. Sri Krishna said to them, Mothers, dear, I am immensely pleased with your devotion. You better go back and serve your husbands. They will receive you back with great affection. They will be pleased to know about your devotion to me. You will all reach me very soon. Have patience. Accordingly, the ladies returned to the Yajna Shala. The Brahmins received them with great joy, for they were filled with remorse. They condemned themselves for their ignorance and arrogance in not responding to the call of the Lord. They envied the ladies for their glory in having served food to the Lord with their own hands. The Brahmins said, to themselves. We have neglected the Lord available in person here and have been doing great sacrifices. For what purpose are they useful? We have left off the main object and have been running after the shadow. All our knowledge is a mere waste. Though the ladies had no Vedic knowledge, no samskaras, no rites, no austerities, no inquiry, no great charities, by mere devotion, they had obtained the greatest fruit of life. They have seen the Lord, talked to him, fed him, served him. What more does a noble soul aspire for in this life? We have learnt all the theory, but not put it into practice. All our efforts have become a waste. We are deluded by his maya. We beg his pardon and pray that he may lift us off this maya samsar. Maya samsar.
Thus they repented very much. Yet they had not the courage to go out of the Yajna Shala because of the fear of Kamsa.